So what is up guys and today I'm gonna teach you how to do auto transitions like me. So let's get started. The first thing you will need to do is go to each one of your clip and press Ctrl Shift Alt Y to add a no layer. Then cut it to the size of your clip by pressing Alt then close bracket and the same thing with the other side. Duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D and then link your clip to the first no layer and the first no layer to the second no layer and then just do it to each one of your clips when you have all your clips ready with the no layers the next thing you will need to do is go to the first clip you want to do the rotors on and think what transition you want to do on this one because as you can see here momoshiki is zoomed in and then here he's zoomed out so the best thing would be to do a zoom out transition and you don't really need to do a position because he's in the middle on the second clip too but another thing i want to add is actually doing a fake zoom in so if you are doing a zoom out you can also add a fake zoom in because it makes the, the clip more dynamic and more interesting so to do fake zoom in you would keyframe the scale where you want the fake zoom in to start and uh, you can keyframe the scale by pressing S on your no layer and then press on the timer go to the end of the clip and then put the value of the zoom out that you want I would recommend putting something between 40 to like 50 or so then make sure you put the last keyframe outside of the clip I'll show you why in a bit then select both of the keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them then go to the graph and graph it like so this graph is to make a fake zoom in because as you can see it zooms in first and then it zooms out and make sure we add the motion blur to the clip by pressing on this block and by the way you can also add it to the rest of the clips while you are at it and as you can see it added motion blur if it didn't make sure that this icon is also pressed and as you can see it added motion blur which will just make everything smoother but as you can see it still doesn't look good so to fix that go to your effects and preset tab and search motion tile drag it onto your clip and change the settings like mine and as you can see now it fills in the black parts so it doesn't look bad now we need to add rotations to it so go to the same part where you edit the scale but press R and then also press the stopwatch then go to the end of the clip again and choose which side you want the rotations to happen so I will just do negative this time then drag it to the end now you can either also do a fake roto like we did with the zoom so you'll rotate the other side first and then rotate this way which in my opinion looks better on this specific clip and then we go we did our first transition and yeah we'll continue to the second clip so because in this clip we did a zoom out we need to start from a zoomed in position into a zoomed out position so go to the end of the clip keyframe the scale and because we also did the rotation we also need to keyframe the rotation then press u to show all your keyframes then go to the start of the clip zoom it in i would zoom in the clip between like 300 maybe even 350 depends on the clip and then for the rotors because we ended this clip with negative value as you can see here we'll start this clip with positive value usually i would do like about 20 then press f9 to easy ease and graph them now this time because we are not doing like a fake zoom or anything this graph will work again change it a bit depends on the clip and on your likings this graph should look good for the most part as you can see with this transition looks very smooth now we will be doing the transitions for this one so because as you can see naruto is on the left and he's like zoomed out here and then he zoomed in here so it would be good to zoom in into the left because again now also is on the left so again we'll keyframe the default values at the end but we'll also keyframe the position this time then what you will need to do is go to the end of the clip and zoom it in because again we want to do a zoom in i would usually do like 250 to like 400 maybe then again we'll go to the left and also a bit up because we want to go into his head kind of now when we add a rotor if you go to the left like here i like usually using a rotor value that is positive and if you go to the right i would use a rotation value that is negative so again this time because we are going left i'll use a positive value i would also change the value for the y a bit because the rotations kind of messed it up a bit then just press f9 to easy ease the keyframes and then graph them like we did with the, the first transition on this clip
Now, as you can see, the position value, even when you easy ease them, you can't graph them. And that's because you have to right click on the position and then press separate dimensions to separate them to X and Y values for each one. And then you can easy ease them again and then just graph them like you did with the other ones. And as you can see now, we have a zoom in. I did forget to actually move in the keyframes to the end of the clips and that's exactly why you don't want them to be here because then as you can see on the last frame it won't have any motion blur which doesn't look very smooth. You need to also add the motion tile to the rest of the clip which after you edit for the first clip you can just copy it from the first clip by pressing ctrl c and then just clicking on, on the rest of the clips and press ctrl v and as you can see just added it to the rest of the clip so you won't have to do it each time. So yeah we did a zoom in into Naruto. Now we'll be going to the end of this clip, keyframing the scale because we did a zoom in, the position because we went to the left and the rotation because we also did the rotation. Then we'll also be pressing separate dimensions so we'll be able to graph it. Because we did a zoom in, we want to start from a zoom out position so I'll put about 75 to 80 and because we did a positive value rotation we'll do a negative value and because we went to the left we need to start this clip from the right and go to the left and if you go to the right then you need to start the second clip in the left and go to the right so yeah just drag it a bit to the right and then just graph them like we did with the other transitions. Now to a rotation and position because as you could see on this clip Sasuke is on the right so just go to the start of the clip, keyframe the rotation and the position then press separate dimensions, press U to show all the keyframes, go to the end of the clip, move it to the right and because we are going to the right this time we'll do a negative rotation value then uh, select easy ease and graph them like we did with the rest. I would also, because of the rotation, it also kind of seems like it's going down even though it's not really. To counter it, I would basically also change the Y value to go up and then just also graph the Y. And as you can see now it looks better. And now for Sasuke, we'll basically be doing the opposite. So we'll start at the end of the clip, keyframe the position and the rotation, then separate dimension, go to the start of the clip. And because we went right, we need to start on the left and go to the right. And because we ended this clip with negative value, as you can see here, we'll start this clip with positive value and then select F9 to easy ease and graph. Now the last thing I would like to add before finishing is bar. So to do that you'll press Ctrl Alt Y to add an adjustment layer. Make it about like 6 frames or so. Then go to your effects and preset tab and search warp and then drag the warp to your adjustment layer. Change the setting to fish eye and change the bend to 0. Keyframe it at the start of the adjustment layer. Then go to the end, change the value to a negative value. I usually like doing it between like 80 to 100 depends how much I want to. On this clip I'll just do it on 90 or so. Then uh, easy ease and graph it like we did with the rest pretty much and in my opinion it makes it look smoother and better for like zoom out. Now if you use it on zoom ins like here in my opinion it looks very weird so I would only use it when you do a zoom out transition. So yeah I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Uh, make sure to write in the comments what other tutorials you want me to make and see you